Uh, greetings, uh, not from Tromerville, but from beautiful Los Angeles, as you can see by this fine background. I'm here with the director of Blood Junkie, none other than Drew Roses. And uh, the Blood Junkie, for those of you who do not know, is the shot-by-shot -shot remake of Steven Spielberg's Armistad. Pretty much the same it's thing, amazing. except not at all. I want to just yeah. take this moment, actually, yes. while you're here. Yes, well, I want to just present you with the honorary Craig Wilson official koozies, man koozies, uh, official beer koozie. Oh, gee, thank you. Thank you every, so you know, much. I have a hot coffee here. I'm going to put it right in. And uh, this is, it's a koozie. There it goes. Blood junkie koozie. It'll keep your coffee so much hot and your beers cold. It tastes so much better. It's delicious. Oh. <laughs> Trauma is releasing Blood Junkie, which is my first feature film, shot in Wisconsin for $7,000. Excuse me, wait a minute. When, seven thousand. You said it was a $70 million no, no, dollar seven, production. You well, said it was $70 million. I said it looks what? like it could be $70 million. Yes, but oh, oh, okay. It feels really good to be following the footsteps of such great independent films as Lloyd Kaufman and all the Troma team people. So. Well, I think you're ahead of the footsteps. <laughs> Blood <laughs> Junkie is a good movie. It's funny and it's got uh, horror. I like the uh, the throwback to the 80s. It's sincere. Sometimes when I watch uh, early Troma films, I feel like that's a throwback to the 80s even when it was made in the 80s. <laughs> well, it was more like a throw up uh, uh, from the 80s, uh, <laughs> as in puke. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean... <laughs> I think you're very talented. How did you decide to make a funny movie? Most people doing sort of the horror area, you know, want to do torture porn or they want to do, uh, they want to, mm -hmm. they don't want to, they don't make it funny. It kind of fell into place. I, you know, I just went in there trying to do whatever I could to make the best film I could. Right. I saw how funny it was getting. I just kind of like embraced that and sort of went yeah. down that road with it. And so the sense of humor is based on the syndicated movies that I saw as a kid pretending to be asleep, sneaking into my basement mm -hmm. and watching mm -hmm. late night television that later become hilarious to me as an adult. Hey, what's going on, ladies? Ready to ride or what? The leg warmers in Blood, in Blood Junkie, where'd you get all those leg warmers? Because mm, that's a, well, period, it's a period piece. It is a period piece. Believe it or not, they still uh, make leg warmers in Wisconsin that are alive and well. You can find a mullet there too, and it's not even ironic. Welcome to paradise. I'm your host, Billy the Butt Grinaldi. Today, we're gonna concentrate on the back of the legs where the legs come up and meet the butt. <laughs> You've got a governor who's pretty good, blood junkie. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't He's believe in uh, draining the blood from some. He doesn't some believe in uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's that? Uh, <laughs> collective bargaining. Collective bargaining. There you go. We don't have that at trauma either. It's evil. <laughs> it's evil. <laughs> I just, I'm interested in your thoughts on independent film in 2011 versus when you started. How has it changed? Where is it? Where do you see it? Going? Well, the good news, of course, is that the making of cinema has been democratized, as evidenced by. Drew Roses doing Blood Junkie for 7,000 bucks. The biggest change is uh, um, a negative one, and that is that the industry which permitted us to establish trauma and, and basically have the American dream going from no money to a, a movie studio, and we're almost 40 years old. Today, the industry has become so consolidated that it's kind of a, almost monopolistic. And the rules that used to protect the public from monopoly have been done away with. So now, as you know, the movie theaters are basically two chains, Regal and uh, somebody, American Multi-Cinema, <coughs> and they're owned and controlled by the major conglomerates. Shit, man, we're fucked, we're totally fucked. And unfortunately, your movie, which is better than the movies that we made back in the 70s and 80s, this is much better, but it is virtually impossible to get on television, even uh, crappy Skinamax, uh, because they're, they don't show independent movies. How do we confront that problem? Then? Video on demand, Netflix streaming, and trying to find other ways to get films out there, because the way that people watch movies now is a lot different than it was. So the American dream has to evolve and find a new way for independent films to get seen. If there is a salvation for us independent artists, it's. Uh, it's going to be the industry. We don't want to discourage the uh, up-and-coming filmmakers from going out there and well, no, I sweating think, over the craft because, I, I you know. think you should discourage them because people <laughs> shouldn't go into this industry to make money or to take cocaine or to have mansions, right? You should go in it because it's art, because you love doing it. 
That's the only reason to go into it. And thanks to uh, the miracle of digital technology, you can be an artist, you can be a school teacher, you can be a nurse. Uh, I would like to be a female nurse myself and still make movies. You can be a school teacher and earn a small salary and, and do some good and yet every once in a while uh, you make a, a $10,000 movie. I'll give you five bucks if you go camping with us this weekend and don't tell mom and dad. A lot of times you hear like women describe that euphoric feeling that overtakes you directly after childbirth where you forget the pain and suffering. Well that's kind of how I felt about making my first feature was that once you finish it, the feeling of euphoria overtakes you and you really kind of forget all of the trials and the pain and suffering that goes into it. And, you, you know, it's a really mm -hmm. rewarding experience, I thought. And I kind of caught the bug and I'm just can't wait to do the next one. Uh, this has been a very interesting uh, chat, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Drew. And uh, Blood Junkie is the, the best movie I have ever seen in my life, uh, except for Batman and Robin. Mm -hmm.